All right, in this video, I'm going to show you how to uh, grab some HTML source code with a little bit more tutorial on regex. We're going to use Tasker for this because KOWP, the raw feature, I've mentioned it in quite a few tutorials that raw slows KOWP down for me. Plus with Tasker, we can grab, we can do regex matches and we can save those matches as variables or store them as variables in Tasker and then we can start cutting that piece down. So it's much faster streamline and and honestly a little bit or quite a bit less coding so to speak versus what we would do in KOWP but then we'll send it over to KOWP to actually display on our live wallpaper uh, before I get started we're getting some remodeling done to our front porch so they're cutting down railings and putting new posts and all that stuff up so you may hear some background noise I apologize about that in advance this is going to be a two parts tutorial the first part we're going to focus on grabbing the dates from a website we're going to be looking for patterns okay and this is the request I got from a user probably about two months ago. Um, I've been trying to play catch up on my tutorials. Keep them coming. This is what keeps the videos coming to you all. So even if you're not interested in grabbing this information, I think it's going to be a valuable, tutor valuable tutorial and tasker on how to do some HTTP get. But as you can see here, one, two, three, four, five. I got five dates. One, two, three, four, five. It's actually grabbing those first five there. And then if we look here, we got one, two, three, four, five. That's going to be this one, two, three, four, five right there. And as you notice, they are matching up. They should as long as my custom live wallpaper is refreshed. And then the next five, one, two, three, four, five, should be one, two, three, four, five. The first part of this tutorial, the first, I'm going to make two videos at least, is going to be grabbing the dates because the dates will change eventually down here. So that's the first part of the tutorial. The second part will cover this stuff. Let's go ahead and go into Tasker and have a look. Now, I'm just going to start from scratch, but the first tutorial again is going to cover all of this, how we do this stuff here. And that's what I'm going to show you. Um, if you can follow this without even doing anything, great. Go ahead and do that. But I want to go through it step by step. So I'm going to recreate this and I'm just going to call this task toot. All right. Now, what we have to do is we have to look at the source code of this thing. So the way we do that, I'm using Google Chrome. I just right click and go to view page source. And there's our page source here. We got to take all this information and we're going to have to do some regex on it. Now there's probably more than one way to do the pattern matching, but this is what's worked for me. I'm looking for patterns in this thing. And what I noticed when I was doing this particular one, if I scroll through the source code, I'm trying to get the dates, but I scroll down far enough, eventually I get to where the actual information is. And the dates, there's a date, there's a date. And all of these dates, when I started looking, I was like, okay, how can I match these things up? Well, luckily, in this particular source code, the dates started with this. All of them started with something like that. But notice nothing else. None of these other lines up here. And you're going to see that right here in a second. All of these lines that had the dates in it started with this. So what I want Tasker to do is I want it to read this source file and I want it to grab these lines. Once we grab these lines and we store that as a variable, we can start chopping this stuff up to get just the data. It works quite nice. So what we got to do first is tell Tasker to get this source code. So I'm going to go to plus. I'm going to do HTTP get and the code that we want. So again, I'm going, I'm getting the source code from here, which is going to be getting this information. And let's see if it's going to paste it in there. Boom. Okay. Now that right there is going to grab that source code. It's going to grab all that stuff, but I'm over at regexr so we can see how to actually uh, pattern match this stuff. But what I like to do as well in Tasker, I like to save this file. So I'm going to go to output file. And I'm going to go to wherever I want to save it to. Now you can skip this step a lot, of, uh, but this is just what I prefer to do. Just in case I run into an error, I can always go back and open the text file up and see why it's not working the way it works. As you can see, I already have one called arenavision.txt. I'm just going to call this one toot. That way I don't get them mixed up. And that's all I'm doing in that first thing. So it's grabbing it, it's saving it as a text file. Now, I'm going to go ahead and run this real quick. That way it grabs the information and it has ran and now I have that text file. All of this stuff here is saved onto my device now. It's just a small text file. It's not real big. Now I want Tasker to read that file. So read, 
read file. What file do I want it to read? The one that it just created. So I'm going to go to my tasker folder where I have it saved. And there it is, Arena Vision 2. Okay, now we want to store this as a variable. So I'm letting Tasker read the file and we're actually going to, it's not pulling the information from the internet uh, except for that HTTP get. It's actually going to do, it's going to read this file and I'm going to store this or yeah, store this variable as arena. Okay, it's a local variable. Now, let's go ahead and test some things out. You probably can hear some hammering in the background. I apologize. So flash and let's flash arena and I'm gonna do it as long because in a minute we might need it for long but so what it's gonna do now it's gonna pull it it's gonna read it and now it's going to flash and basically it's flashing all of this stuff now what we want to do is we want to definitely start cutting some things out so what we're going to do here is we're going to uh, search we're gonna do a variable search and basically all I'm doing is I'm, I'm going through these pieces right here um, step by step with you. So we've read the file. Now we want to do a variable search and replace. And what we want to do that on, let me go back to my two. I'm going to do variable search replace. So variable, I probably could have done that much easier, but where is it at? There it is. Variable search replace. All right. What variable do we want to search through? Arena, the one that we just got from the text file. What do we want to search for? Well, I want to get the lines that have the dates in it. So let's come over here and do some regex stuff. Let me show you this. And what I want to do here is start off with that. Obviously I want to match that up. And then I want, now here's one thing I ran into. I was thinking, well doggone it, I want it to match, you know, that backslash with that TR because that's where I'm getting, my date is in that line. Well, that has another, uh, it's unescaped forward slash. Well, we need to escape it. And the way we escape it is we put the other slash in front of it. This is the escape character. This is how you escape it. And once you escape it, then it will match up. Notice it does match up. And now we have 106 matches. If I scroll through here real quick in blue, basically all 106 of these with the exception of maybe the last two at the bottom. Let me come on down here to the bottom. Um, this one here and this one here. Okay, there are a few towards the end, but notice like it's still grabbing the ones with the dates in it. So you have to hunt around through your source code to find a pattern. Well, I'm not worried about the bottom ones to be quite honest with you because I'm only going to grab maybe the first five or ten when I create my TV guide on my custom live wallpaper. So we're cool with that, but now we want to grab the whole line. Right now it's just matching that up. So how can we grab the whole line? We can do dot and star what the dot does it matches any character except line breaks and it will be zero or more times basically what that's going to do is it's going to grab that whole line you don't have to do anything else with that pattern matching for this particular one regex by default granted we haven't removed any line breaks it will only match to a certain line and note, so this is like a new line. This is a new line, new line, new line, new line. So that's all we need. That's going to grab. Notice it didn't change anything about my matches really, did it? If I delete back to the, the TR, 106 dot star or asterisk, whatever you want to say. Now, there's our match. So this is what we want to put inside of Tasker. That's what we want to search for. Okay. Now, what do we want to do with this thing? I want to store matches. What this is going to do is it's going to pull just these blue lines and I'm going to store these matches and I'm going to call this uh, percent get lines or whatever you want to call it. And that's all we have to do here. I think in a minute we're going to be do, doing some stuff a little bit different with search and replace. But there it is, percent get lines. All right. Now I'll tell you what, let's now flash arena and see what happens. Oh no, not arena, but get lines. Now what this is gonna do, it's gonna take those matches and we're storing it as this local variable, but actually what it's gonna do is it's gonna create an array. This is one thing I was running into as well. So if I try to show get lines, which there is a variable, local variable called get lines, it's not gonna show what I want it to show. It's just gonna say percent get lines. Because what it does is when it finds all these lines that you see here, it's going to store them and it's gonna separate them with a comma. And essentially what this does is it creates an array, a list. So now if I come back in here and apply parentheses, what we should be seeing 
are going to be a bunch of TRs, but we're going to see some dates in here, and it's going to show all of those, but it ain't going to show all 106 of them. But boom, TR, there's our date, TR, there's our date, and you, maybe you saw some commas. Let me play that one more time for you. But these things are separated by commas as well. Very good. All right, so the flash is just here for testing and tutorial purposes. So kind of like going back to here, I'm now a variable search and replace. Yeah, my code's a little bit different, but I, I, I learn things about Tasker, KLWP, and coding all the time. So it's still doing what I want it to do. Now what we want to do with that array, we want to actually store it as yet another local variable. Some of you may say, hey, you don't have to do this. There's another way to do it, but this is what's worked for me. What I want to do, this thing is stored as an array. Well, what I'd like to do with this array, instead of it task or thinking of it as being an array, I want it just to think of it as being one long text file. And by doing that, I can cut my commas out. I can do some more regex and whatnot. So let's do variable set. Variable set. And we want to, let's call this date array this is the going now I know it's not an array when I do this okay and I want to set it to get lines and I think I need to put my parentheses there just go back and double check yes so this is the step we're on now variable set so we're creating a new local variable but what this is going to do is it's going to take that variable array that we have here get lines that we got from up here in this variable search and replace and it's just going to store it as a long list of text sure there's going to be commas in there but tasker's not going to see it as an array anymore until we do some more work with it so i tell you what let's just see what we got going on y'all can i drag that down let me drag that up how about that all right let's see what date array looks like it's not going to look any different than the get lines. But now, Tasker's not seeing this as an array yet. It's seeing it as just one long list of text with some commas in it. So what we can do with this thing is we can actually, going back to here, we've got our variable set, and now what we're going to do is we're going to look in this entire long list and we're going to cut out. This is where the good stuff comes in. We're going to cut out, let me come over here, so we have a long list of these things. It's just a long text file. And what I want to do is I want to cut out anything that's inside of this and this. But let me show you something. So I want to cut that out. If I can cut that part out that you see highlighted, and actually let me take away this right now. That way I can get away from the highlighted stuff there. If I can cut that out and that out from this local variable that we have inside a tasker all we will have is this date and that's good stuff that's exactly what we want well there's something we have to be careful with here we have to be not greedy um, if I come in here and I do this dot star and I do that notice it's capturing I don't want it to capture that I want it to capture just this right to here and this to here and we're gonna let tasker kind of delete it well what we have to do here is this watch instead of it what this will do is it's gonna grab any character except line breaks and it's gonna do it zero zero more times but if we put the question mark there what that's going to do is it's going to search through here and it's gonna look for anything that starts and ends it's capturing that one separately I don't know if you can see the little white in between those whereas if I take away that you don't see any white spacing. But if I put that question mark there, it searches for the first time this occurs and it's gonna capture it. So it's capturing that, it's capturing that, it's capturing that right there, and then it's gonna capture that. Now you may say, what about all these other ones that are blue? Well, task has already gotten rid of that through the stuff that we've done so far. So let's go back into two. Let's search and replace. Search and replace, so here we go variable search replace and we want to search inside of that data array and what do we want to search for we want to search for this anywhere this occurs we want to get rid of it well here's how we get rid of it so I'm just going to take this copy 
paste. And we don't want to store these matches. Remember a while ago when we did some regex, we stored matches? We don't want to store matches. Now what we want to do, I'm not going to store matches. I'm going to replace matches with nothing. So it says optional. Pretty cool. Watch this. So now I've searched for anything that starts with this and ends with this, but inside of that data array that I created. So really we're talking about this line here. A whole bunch of lines like this. Remember all those, I think it was 106 matches a while ago. It's going to search for that. It's going to get rid of it because it's replacing it with nothing. Search for that, replace it with nothing. Search for that, replace it with nothing, but it's going to leave us with this right here or up to that six at least. All right, so let's flash data ray yet again. Look at that. I see nothing but dates. Yeah, I see last update at the bottom, but I see nothing but dates. It just got rid. By us doing search replace, we didn't store the matches because we don't want to store the matches. We want to replace those matches with nothing. Essentially, that is deleting them. Good stuff. Now, we want to take, again, we still, this tasker is not seeing this as an array yet because we had the array here. We stored it as a local variable, which is just a long text item. And then, what we want to do, we got rid of all the greater than, less than, with everything in between it. We want to take that thing that we see right here and we want to split where the commas are. This is going to create yet another array, but this array is going to be much more useful. So let's do variable split. So variable split. And actually, let me, I'll tell you what, I'm going to come right back to this, but just kind of going along. We variable search replace. Now we're going to do the variable split. And we're going to split with the comma and I have delete base check. It's the exact same task. So variable split. We want to take that data array, which we've just noticed now. We've gotten rid of all the HTML junk and all we have is the date showing. We want to split it with the comma and let's go to delete base. I need to do a little bit more reading on delete base, but uh, nonetheless, now watch, watch, watch what happens if we try to flash data array now. It just says data array because now, it, remember a while ago when I tried to flash, what was it, get lines without the parentheses? Now what we're going to have, we're about to get to the good stuff. Now it's going to flash pretty much the same thing you've seen all along. But now we can access each individual date inside of that array because when we split it and we, we now have an array again. But we had to take the array initially, get lines, we had to convert it just to a regular old long list of text because we had to search through all that text and cut all that junk out. Once we cut that junk out, all we had were dates separated by commas. So then we can split it back up and this creates yet another array. So, with that said, let's start flashing particular pieces. The first item, I'm going to come back to here because we should be good to go. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen. 10, 11, 12, 13, That's what we're looking through. Let's do data array 1. So now it's just going to flash that first one. And to prove that to you further, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13. Now, between 12 and 13 is when we have a change from the 21st of October to the 22nd. So 12 and 13. Well, how can I show and make sure that that's right? I can do it like this. I can do 12 colon 13. So now we're going to see one with the 21st, one with the 22nd. Perfect. It's grabbing exactly what I want. So we've taken that source code and we've cut all this junk out and all we're getting out of this thing, y'all, is a bunch of dates. So from here, I tell you what, let's go a little bit further into it. I'm trying to see where I get 23. Okay, I don't feel like counting that far because <laughs> there's a bunch of 22s. Um, but nonetheless, hopefully that, that did show you uh, from 12 to 13, where was that at? Right there from 12 to 13, we did go from 21st to the 22nd. And the, what the colon allows you to do, it, it allows you to grab any certain number that you want. For example, suppose I want to grab the first one up to the 13th one. 
what that's going to do is Tasker is going to show 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13. I've been messing with Java a little bit. Java, when you access elements of an array, Java starts with 0, Tasker starts with 1. So what Tasker is getting ready to flash now is it's going to flash all of these dates and the last one we're going to see, we're going to see a bunch of 21st or October 21st, 2016, but the last one should be the 22nd. Let's flash that and see. A lot of 21st, look at that one, 22nd, boom. Cool. All right. So now what do we want to do? Well, we can send this over to KOWP now. And I'm going to send this one over to KOWP. So I'm going to cut my flash off. And I'm going to plug in KOWP, send variable. And let's do configuration. Let's uh, task or string. Okay, we want to do that percent array, what do we want to send over to KOWP? Uh, what was it? Date, array, and let's send over the first 13. So from 1 to 13. And what do I want to call this? I'm just going to call it date toot. Okay. Check that. Boom. And I'm just going to back out of here, and I'm going to make sure I've covered everything. Send variable splitter. We got everything done. This should be good to go. So I'm ready to send this over to KOWP. I'm going to go ahead and do that. That way the KOWP is going to go ahead and get this variable date toot. So we have that applied. Let's go back to the home screen. And now let's actually get this in KOWP. So I'll back out of here. This is where I was messing around with it earlier. Let's just add a new text item. And I'll tell you what, we'll bump the size up a little bit. And let's go over here. So we want to broadcast tasker. And remember I called it date toot. As you can see, there it is. And look, remember how I said we're going to get a bunch of 21s, 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 21s? I mean, we're getting these dates, but the very last one is 22, and that's that guy right there. I love. See, now, once you practice with the regex and tasker, you saw how fast it was pulling the information and displaying it. It's a lot quicker than the raw feature in KOWP. Plus, again, tasker allows us to do the matching and storing those matches as a local variable. Now, this is not really an organized way of of showing this information. So for now, I am going to do some more cleaning up in part two or maybe even a third part to this series. But what we want to do is we want to do some regex on this as well inside of KOWP. So TC reg, and what I want to do is I want to search through that list there. And if you recall, they were separated by commas. So I want to search for the commas and I want to replace them with nothing first of all. Notice that got rid of the commas. So, you know, 2110, 2016, there was a comma right there. Well, we got rid of it. But what we can do now is we can press enter between those two there. And now we have, um, actually, let me just go back one. Now we have a, a thing separating each individual date. And just like that, let me save this. Let me go back to my home screen. We have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13 that match up all the way down to there. And that's what we pulled from arenavision.in. Now, I don't remember if I've already showed you this, but I'm gonna show it to you anyway because some of you may, may this may have pushed you in the right direction. This is the second part. Now, some of my coding may be a little bit different in part two of my tutorial because, uh, like I said, I'm learning different things about regex and coding and all that stuff as I get these tutorials made for y'all. But that's the second part that I'm going to do in part two. And then what we're going to do, which I haven't done yet, is taking all this stuff and actually creating this, creating the actual chart and table so it looks nice and organized. It's going to require a little bit more work on the tasker end and on the KOWP end. But for now, I just wanted to get the idea across to you of how you can use tasker to take some HTML source code, cut some junk out. Granted, you can find some type of pattern to match with. And that's it for this video. Hope it helped.